It wasn't meant to be like this, but this is the true end to William Afton and Springtrap. My God! It all started way back in the early 1970s where William met a man named Henry Emily and in the 1970s they opened their first location together, Fred Bear's Family Diner. And then in 1983 the duo opened the second location together, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And this is where the real story of William Afton begins. William had three children, the eldest son Michael, their daughter Elizabeth and their youngest son Norman, the crying child. Sadly, Norman had his issues where he reported seeing various nightmarish creatures running around the bedroom, which looked awfully like his father's animatronics seen in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. These nightmarish things he was seeing resembled the main attractions in the diner, which was Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie. Now these animatronics couldn't move anywhere and were bolted to the floor, and they would only really move to the sound of music which was played in the diner. But to the kids in the early 1980s, this was really cool. Apart from a certain kid, and that kid had to be William Afton's eldest child, Michael. Michael had developed some serious behavioural issues. These behavioural issues eventually developed into severe bullying of his younger sibling, Norman. It is believed that this phobia actually was derived from Michael himself donning the mask. But to help Norman get over his fear, they decide to hold a birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's diner. Happy birthday, Norman! Where he was accompanied by his best friend Charlie, which was actually the daughter of the co-owner, Henry. They were all having a great time, but alas, this was not to last, as Michael and his friends soon crashed the party, wearing all different animatronic masks, in the aim of pranking Norman. Please don't do this. Not today. Okay, Norman, ready for your birthday present? Michael, please, let me go! Let me go! Time to give Fred Bear a big kiss. Ready? Michael, please, no! One, two, three! After this horrific day, Michael was arrested and charged with manslaughter. His father, William, cooperates with the police, and thus, Michael was sentenced to 15 years in prison. This event sparks the real downfall and spiral of William Afton. But Norman wasn't the only child to lose his life that night. There was another. In the late evening of that night, Charlotte Emily had just finished closing the pizzeria. She was outside, it was all dark, she was wet and alone, and William Afton's purple sedan pulls up behind her. The sheriff found her in, in a trash pile behind the building, just covered in blood. They never found who, who killed my daughter, no, no footprints, no fingerprints, no weapon, nothing. Two tragedies, Norman and Emily. Michael was in jail and William was a broken man. The Afton family was getting torn to pieces, not to mention they had to close Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Henry and William had both lost their entire life's works, not to mention a son and a daughter. William's mind was starting to fragment and break, but for some strange reason, he decided to convince Henry to open another pizzeria in 1987. Freddy Jr's, the successor to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. <laughs> this restaurant wasn't like the old restaurant, it had been completely upgraded and the most notable upgrade was the animatronics. No longer were they bound to just the stage bolted to the floor, these animatronics could now move around at will, moving throughout the pizza place, interacting with guests. William named these the toy animatronics. Further to this, the other creator Henry was still distraught at the loss of his daughter and demanded that these new animatronics feature facial recognition software. so it could scan any guest that would enter the pizzeria and log into a criminal database, verifying that they were not criminals. And Henry thought to himself, this time the restaurant will be different, this time the restaurant will be the safest on earth, this time… The new security guard had been reporting that the animatronics were moving round on their own and he was convinced that there was something wrong with them, like they were out to get him even. The dude is terrified those toys are going to kill him. He doesn't like how these ones walk around compared to the ones we had at Fred Bear's where they were just bolted to the floor. Well, Mr. Fitzgerald is going to have to suck it up if he wants his paycheck. He was fobbed off and told this was normal behaviour for the animatronics to move around at night. 
But little did Jeremy know that something horrific had happened that day. Gabriel, Susie and one other are spending the day at the pizza place. When they come into contact with a strange new animatronic no one's ever seen before, it's a golden bonnie. Um, are you part of Freddy's band too? Oh, I'm, um, I'm an old friend of Freddy and his gang. What are your names? Uh, I'm Gabriel and this is Susie. And those are our friends over there reading at the table. How precious. Are your parents around? Why don't I show you something really cool? Would you like that? Follow me, boys and girls. Um, mister, where are we? You're in my special little world. Are you afraid of the dark? I'm scared. I think we should go. <laughs> On his fifth night at Freddy's, Jeremy Fritzschild had had enough. And just a few hours into his last shift, Fritz gets a phone call from Jeremy. Hello? Okay, dude. Is this what you were talking about? What's going on? I got the bunny and the chicken looking right at me. The person service room cameras disabled. Please tell me I'm going to be okay. Wait, the parts and service room cameras disabled? Oh, shit. Fritz, what the f are the robots doing, man? Well, I told you shit was going to get real. Look, did you hear about what happened today? No, what happened? Well, we're probably going to be closed for the next week because... Well, I don't actually know what happened. All I know is that we're going under investigation. This place is going to hell, and... Listen, just finish your shift, and I'll get your paycheck on Sunday. Fritz, this was it. Jeremy intended to quit after his last day tomorrow where he was scheduled to work a birthday party with Fritz. And he was gonna quit, just not the way he uh, intended. Yeah. Mango. Where's the mango? It should be in there. Nobody touched it. Well, some kids said the animatronic from Kids Cove was missing and I'm in here and I'm not seeing anything. Alright, alright, hold on. Let me, let me get a hold of William and Henry. After the security guard Jeremy's death, Freddy Junius was shut down. Fritz was questioned, but later let go. Henry was completely devastated. How could this have happened? He programmed these animatronics. They were the most recent, most up-to-date things. They had facial recognition. How could this have happened? William, on the other hand, blamed the animatronics. He said the main cause was the facial recognition software, which drove Henry insane, which later had him institutionalized. With Henry out the way, William Afton could now continue on his own. But because he had placed the blame of the Bite of 87 on the animatronics, he was ordered to completely dismantle them. But this was in the end. He decided to use these dismantled animatronics, refurbishing them, putting them as the main cast of characters for the brand new Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. <laughs> Mike Schmidt had been out of work for some time and was looking for a job. He seen an advert in the local paper asking for a security guard at the local entertainment pizzeria. Needless to say, he applied as it was an easy gig and he needed the money. Working 12am to 6am. What could possibly go wrong watching cameras, right? As he shortly found that there was something quite odd about this entire place, the animatronics seemed to move on their own. Very eerie feeling, as if something inside them was haunting them, keeping them alive, moving them around on their own. As the nights progressed, things got worse and worse. Hey. 
the animatronics once again claimed another victim. Six years had passed and Henry Emily was due to be released from his solitary confinement. At long last, he could reintegrate into society, move on, settle down and forget all about Five Nights at Freddy's. Or so he thought. He had learned that William had opened another restaurant. Just a mere days after this, Henry Emily had learned the truth. William had killed his daughter in cold blood. He had killed Charlie. He was responsible for all the disappearances. He was the one in the golden suit. And even worse than that, he was responsible for the animatronics which were coming to life. The victims of William were living on inside these animatronics, haunting their very essence, driving them to kill. William had also discovered this as well. He didn't know how, but he knew the animatronics were haunted by some type of spirit. These wrathful spirits speaking revenge were dangerous. He knew this, but he didn't know what to do about it. But he did know how to put an end to the robots, and that was to dismantle them. So late one night, he arrived at the pizzeria, and he decided to completely dismantle all the robots. Robots. After all, what harm could these robots do to anybody, even him, if they were nothing but a pile of parts on the floor? But it wasn't just the animatronics which were out to get him. It was the very spirits themselves. Dismantling the robots had little to no effect. The spirits would still live on. You're gonna perish. You will walk in hell. It is time for our revenge. We will finally be set free from this place and live in heaven. Look, I'm sorry. At this stage, the only option William had was to don one of his old spring trap suits. These suits had a system which would convert them from being animatronic to a wearable suit by using the mechanism known as a spring trap. You would be able to turn an animatronic mascot into a fully wearable suit. This didn't obviously come without its risks and was highly dangerous. Hence why these suits were completely retired and left abandoned. But there was one in this room where William, surely he would be safe inside this suit. To this day, no one knows why he put on that suit. Perhaps it was to taunt the spirits, or maybe he thought he would be safe inside. Who really knows? But the spirits that night got their revenge. William Afton was no more, but he always comes back, and he did. After Afton's disappearance, the rumours of the tragedies had spread and Freddy Fazbear's was finally closed for good. The place had fallen into disrepair and become a place of urban legend. Myths of these animatronics, the deaths surrounding it, had made it kind of a, such as a creepy pasta. With this level of publicity, it's obvious that people smelt an opportunity. An opportunity to make money off the misfortune of others. Thus, the opportunists opened Fazbear Frights, a haunted house slash scare maze which was based on all the lore, the tragedy and the fear that surrounded the pizza place. When these opportunities finally got inside, they were hugely disappointed. The place was completely trashed, abandoned, in a state of disrepair, and the animatronics they wanted were completely dismantled. But they did find one animatronic in one of the old pizza plexes, and they transported this to Fazbear's Frights. No one knew William Afton was still inside. Nobody! Well, one person did, and that one person was Henry Emily. You see, Henry did actually find William in the Springlock suit, the night he was attacked by the children, and he chose to leave him there in his own pool of blood, sealing the door behind him, locking him in as to no one to ever find him. He was the only one who knew of this. That was until he recorded all of this on a single tape, which Michael Afton had found. What I saw made me puke on these files. For over 20 years, I was lied to. My, my employees, my own partner, hid things from me that I would have never believed in my entire life. I discovered that William Afton, my own partner, my brother, he had killed five children. He blamed it on me and was responsible, he was responsible for the death of my own daughter. To William, your eternal pit of misery has opened the swallow your asshole. So don't keep the devil waiting, old friend. See you in hell. <laughs> Goddamn kids. They never learn, do they? Who's there? Just someone who's passing by. Looking for someone named William Afton. Well, this is William speaking. Wait a minute. Who the hell is this? 
Michael, having learnt that his father was behind absolutely everything, went mad, decided to get his revenge. He was going to stop at nothing to find his father. And he found him. You really don't recognize me, do you? Can't remember your own son. That's impossible. My son is dead, and my oldest son is... The fact of the matter is, I've got you right where I want you. Truth be told, Michael, you and only you are the reason for all of this. Just for that, surely you must realize that you're not getting out of this alive. Tell me, Dad, who on earth would have killed Charlotte Emily right after? Who are you to judge me for my sins? You go to hell, Michael. <laughs> I'll definitely see you there, you son of a bitch. When I find you, I'm gonna rip you limb from limb. Pretty soon, no one will even remember you existed. Have a good one, Dad. Wait, wait, please, no, Michael! Michael! Don't go, please! Don't leave me here, Michael! I'm sorry! Jesus Christ! Michael! I don't want the door! Michael made sure his father was no more. He could never again hurt anybody, never again don that suit. He was gone. The souls of the children were now free, but for how long? Because he comes back. He always comes back.